top five college bowls in this generation. 1994 Orange Bowl, Florida State, Nebraska, down 16-15. Scott Bentley, 22 yards away. Bobby Bowden and Florida State win it 18-16. Number four, the 03 Fiesta Bowl, Miami, Ohio State. First overtime, Craig Krenzel to Chris Gamble. Incomplete, but pass interference is called. Scores 24-17. Next opportunity, Krenzel taking it himself. Game tied. Second OT tied to 24, Maurice Claret. Handoff, score, and Ohio State, 31-24. Shocking, Miami. Uh, number three, I want to recount from Bert Sugar, but they have this number three, <laughs> Fiesta Bowl from last night. Got it over the middle, has it complete, and it's lateral at the 30, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Boise. Going for a two-point conversion from the three-yard line, and it's a uh, fake play, and they're going to yes! score, Ian Johnson. They rolled the ball to Ian Johnson, and he scored, and the Broncos have won the Fiesta Bowl. Can you believe it? That's number three. Number two, the 84 Orange Bowl on ESPN Classic right now, by the way. 48 seconds left. Nebraska ball running the option and going all the way for the score. Nebraska down 31-30. Tom Osborne says, we're going for two, boys. But, oh, no, it's no good. Miami wins 31-30. And number one, the national title at stake, the 2006 Rose Bowl, Texas and USC and Vince Young. Young from the shotgun. Back to throw. Vince looks. Under pressure. He'll tuck it in and run. Vince to the five. Young. Touchdown, Texas. Vince Young has given the Longhorns the lead with 19 seconds to play in the game. All right, joined now by Lou Holtz and Mark May. If that's not the best bowl game of all time, and I'm looking right at you, Mark, I have no <laughs> idea where you're going. You think it yeah. is. <laughs> give, me, well, give me one that's better. I think that's what fans are wondering. Like, give me one that's better than that. All-time bowls. Well, one in recent memory, the 03 Fiesta Bowl with Miami and Ohio State. Remember that game with Maurice Claret, Willis McGahee, Kellen Winslow Jr. Miami was supposed to come in there and just trounce over Ohio State. Spectacular game with all the big plays, and Ohio State ends up winning the game. This game was just like that. Boise State was not supposed to win this game. Oklahoma was supposed to be the dominant football team coming in this game, and they weren't, and Boise State took it right to them. Coach? I would have to rank it maybe as number one, but if there's one it would come in competition with, it would be the Orange Bowl in 1969. I know most of you listeners are too young to remember it, but it's when Joe Paterno really came on the scene. Penn State was undefeated. They were playing Kansas. They were getting beat 14-7 to with about a minute to go. Penn State scores, goes for two, doesn't make it. There's a penalty on Kansas. They get another chance. They convert it. They beat Kansas 15-14, finished the season undefeated, and that was when Joe Paterno really arrived as a dominant coach. Right. Where does Boise State deserve to be ranked? If you had to do the hard math right now, where would you put them? i put them definitely in the top ten. You can't put them in the top five or six, maybe seven, eight, ninth in that area because whoever wins or loses the Fiesta Bowl, they're going to be number one and number two, so you can forget about that. Most likely Wisconsin. USC, most likely Michigan. So right in there, you got to put them in there around seven or eight. Can they crack that top five, Coach? I think that they would have a legitimate argument for it for several reasons. Number one, they did finish the season undefeated. They did beat Oregon State 42-14, to 14, the same Oregon State team that defeated USC. They also beat Hawaii, which is an excellent team. They manhandled Nevada, which played Miami very good in the bowl game, and dismantled Utah as well, 31-7. So when you look at a team undefeated, won the bowl game, I think they could have a legitimate reason to be a top five. What does this do to a call for a playoff? Does it have an impact? Oh, I think it would. I, I think it would be the greatest thing in the world, and particularly after this game. And I want to tell you, there's a team that Mark and I saw firsthand when we did the analyst on the bowl game named TCU that could play with anybody in the country. If we had a playoff, I think it would be the greatest sporting event in the entire country. I think the enthusiasm, the interest would be parallel to none. Does this change anything, though, Mark? No, it doesn't change anything. It's going to be a great topic for argument and debate. I think the athletic directors, they're the ones that, in the bottom at the end, the bottom line, they're the ones that are going to decide if there's going to be a playoff. Right now, they're saying no. So unless they change their mind about this situation, there's not going to be a playoff. Maybe a plus one down the road, but it's going to be great fodder for debate. All right, so you have a top three all time, right? Absolutely. I'll accept top three. And then in the offseason, when you really look at it, hey. You'll move it right yeah. out there. Yeah. I can't get beat. There's nothing beats this. Uh, definitely yes. top three. Top yeah. three. All right. We got, we got that far. More 